Uh, gosh, the, you know, the whole package, Jace. Um, we targeted him really early in the process. I think you had texted me earlier today. Um, I couldn't really talk about it because um, I wasn't sure it was realistic. Uh, look, he's a big-time rim protector. Um, he's a great one-on-one -on -one defender. He's a big-time post defender. Um, he can really pass it. Um, any of you guys that were at the Gonzaga-Portland game, I'm sure saw that. I mean, he, he put on a clinic. Um, he can stretch the floor. He's got range. He can score over both shoulders. So, um, he, you know, he's everything you want, you want to look for in a big man in our league today because he can play inside and out. He can defend the rim. He can defend one-on-one. -on -one. He can defend pick and roll. Um, and we think he, you know, whether he plays, you know, behind Nurk, and then he can play with them too against some bigger lineups. So it was a great opportunity to move up and get, get a, the kind of a guy you can't get in the middle of the draft. Before, like, Dame and CJ, you said there have been moments that have kind of resonated with you and said, that's my guy. Yeah. Did you have a moment with Zach? I did. I was, I was, I was laughing. Um, Bill Branch and I went to the, uh, the game at the University of Portland, and he trailed a break, banged down a three, and then he caught, a, caught the ball on the left block, got double teamed, threw a behind the back, no look pass to Tilly. And I said, okay, Billy, we can go home. We're done. He's a top 10 pick. And, you know, we knew right then. And then, you, you know, you, you just realize he, he's, a, he's a tough competitor. And one of the things I'm really happy with is we got two of the toughest guys in this draft. And they're going to bring a lot of grit, a lot of toughness. They both have a competitive fire. Um, to the team, and I and I think when you're when you're a young guy joining a team as deep as ours, you're going to need that. You uh, you obviously saw him early in the sort of the scouting process, but had you just seen enough that you didn't need to bring him in for? Uh... We couldn't get him in. Get no, him. we had no shot at getting him in. Um, there was no way he was going to be there at 15, and um, I, th I think we got lucky that he got to 10. You know, quite honestly, I think some transactions that happened tonight changed the real the upper part of the you know the the middle part of the lottery. Um, and then Sacramento had, you know, had, they had um, expectations and they had um, what they wanted to accomplish, you know, in the draft, and it met up with ours, and we were lucky, lucky to move up and get them. Um, but I do think it's funny if you, I know Rosie's not here; they're they're back in the uh, the draft from watching the draft. But we sat at the Mountain West, or sorry, the, we went Mountain West Pac-12 WCC to go scout, and it wasn't just for the sunshine, um, but. We sat there, and he just kept playing better and better, and we kept getting more and more frustrating, knowing the more minutes he got, the more the rest of the country was going to catch up. And, you know, I was talking to his agent about it tonight. He said, well, you, you guys were on this in January. And I, he said, yeah, unfortunately, he went on a run in March that got everybody else up to speed on it. So, um, like I said, we were lucky we had the assets. We have an aggressive owner, really supportive, really believed in what we were trying to do, and he gave us the, uh, you know, the go-ahead to move up. It was, I, I tell you, it was a, this was a tough one um, because we knew we had been talking to Sacramento and a lot, of, a lot was going to have to happen in terms of what they got at five for them to be amenable to trading 10. So what was exciting was they knew right away at five they were open to trading 10. Our problem was we still had to get through some players. Um, we couldn't do 10 on the come. Uh, which is why, Jace, when you asked me, I couldn't answer because he was the only guy we were going to move both picks to go get. So it was a little bit agonizing, you know, waiting around for those four draft picks to make sure that he was still going to be on the board. With Caleb, his body has transformed so much. Did that make it hard to kind of evaluate him? No. You know, it, it was, <laughs> for someone who's barely fitting into a suit right now, it was pretty, it was pretty inspiring, actually. Um, he, he's an incredible kid. I mean, you guys got to interview him when he was here. What he's overcome off the court, on the court, you know, the dedication and passion that he has, you know, to be the kind of person he is right now is, is pretty, it's pretty incredible. It's a great story. Um, but he's, he's bought into it now. Like this isn't a, it wasn't a means to an end. Like this is, he's turned his life around. And, you know, what we really evaluated more than anything with him is he's just a big time basketball player. I mean, you're talking about a guy who shot 45% from three, he was number two in the nation in defensive rebounding. He can bang. He's tough. He scores around the block. He, he's just one of those guys we all keep talking about. We get into these non-position basketball anymore that you just put him on the court and let him play. Colin said that he thinks he can be a rookie of the year. said he wasn't, wouldn't put a limit on himself. And clearly you value him going up to get him. What do you see short-term expectations for his role 
and how quickly do you think he can get up to be a high minute guy, the starter type of guy? Well, that's a, that, you can track Terry down at Summer League, so he'll answer that one for you. Um, you know, what I can tell you is it's not about Summer League. It's not about Rookie of the Year. This is about the next 12 to 15 years. You know, this is a, he, he's, a, he's a franchise level building block to join guys that we already have on this roster. He fits their career arc. Um, he does some things that we really need. Um, but more than anything, I mean, look, we're trying to build the roster the right way. Um, if we can accelerate this, we would accelerate it. But if we're not going to accelerate it, we need to make the best and the most of the model that we're under right now, which is we've talked about it consistently. You know, guys on Damien's career arc, but that can grow with the organization and grow with this team. And, and he fits both because I think he can help right away. We've got a lot of depth. It's going to be a tough rotation to crack. But he, we're in this for the long haul with him. And that's what the draft is for. The draft isn't for quick fixes and positional need. The draft is for, you know, is for the long term. Yeah, back to Swan again again. The, the backstory on him and, and people know about it. How much does that play into your considerations on drafting him uh, over and above his talent? Well, you know, looking at a transformation like that, right, it tells a lot about someone's character. Um, you know, I think you guys were, some of you guys were here back when he played in the Hoop Summit, right, right before he committed, you know, to Purdue, and he's even come a long way from then. And it's not just his body. I think people get hyper-focused on that, but it's also his game. I mean, look at what he's done with his shooting. I mean, that's hours in the gym, and, you know, his, his skill level has just become so much more advanced. And, you know, playing in the Big Ten, you know, at that level, you know, competing, you know, to, to do what he did on the glass and to expand his game is really inspiring that, you know, people look, people, people put too much emphasis on upside being directly correlated strictly to athleticism. And there's upside too in terms of skill level and the ability to play the game of basketball. And I think he's got a really high ceiling when it comes to that because what we were most impressed with we brought him in was his ability to be a really good team defender and the fact that he can really pass the ball. And I think we all saw, you know, the last four teams that were standing this year were all elite passing teams. So anybody that can defend on one side of the ball, rebound, and is also an elite passer and can make shots is someone that we're going we're gonna to maximize. Neil, you said the draft isn't for quick fixes, but two of <coughs> players, Dame and CJ, at least on social media, have been pretty vocal about wanting to upgrade the talent. Yeah. Have they had that conversation with you, and what has that dialogue kind of been like? <laughs> Anyone that knows them knows they've had that conversation with me. Um, but everybody, everybody also knows with me, I mean, I, I like to talk to players about players. You know, I mean, they, they know the league the way that we do, you know, and who can fit and who. And we've had some deals we've passed on because our guys knew what it would be like in the locker room. So I do rely on those guys because they are, you know, they're the future of the franchise and their opinion matters to us. But there's realities to what you can and can't do at times. And there's also times that you have to take a longer view. And it's my job to take more of a macro view of the organization because, you know, we've proven, I, I think, time and again, you know, I think we, you know, we sat in this room not long ago, you know, we were worried about making a trade at the trade deadline. And, you know, and, and I was an unpopular guy out on court one over there telling the guys about the move we made. And it resulted along with, you know, us peaking at the right time and making the playoffs, which is everybody's goal. And absent injury, I think you would have seen a much more competitive series. So, you know, I've got to take what they're, what they're thinking into consideration. I value it immensely. And I've got to try and execute it, but at the end of the day, we've got to do, we've got to do what's right, not just short term, but long term as well. And what you don't want to do, Jason, is you know appease people in the immediate future, and then take two steps backwards. And that's what and that's what we've got to constantly evaluate. Seeing how the team kind of flourished with Yusuf, kind of make you want to add more bigs of that ilk, versatile passing you kind of can do all. No, it's not that. I mean, you know, we've had some bigs here that could really pass the ball and, and play. Uh, we've been lucky that way. But I, I don't think it was about that. I think what Yusuf did was he accelerated this because we, we are a much com more competitive team today than we were back in February. And we've solidified a position that, you know, we were a little bit uncertain of. So that we've got Dame, we've got CJ, we've got great depth, we've got good guys. And this is really just about, I mean, you go into the draft to get the best player you can possibly get. And if, it's, if the guy gets to you like a Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum getting you at 6 and 10, 
then that's the move. If you identify a player like Zach Collins as the best player you can realistically get, you move your chips in and go get him. Um, you know, look, I mean, I think we were prepared for the draft in a way that had we not been able to do this, then we, we would have gotten a really good player at 15 and a really good player at 20. It's just we felt like Zach's value exceeded that of those two picks when they were looked at independent of one another. So it wasn't really positional. It was really just more we think he was the best player on the board. We moved up to get him. And then we did whatever we could to make sure we got 26 right as well. And um, we were very lucky because Caleb was the last guy standing on the board above our candidates at 26. Was Zach at the top of your list realistically where you guys fit into the draft? In the, in the realistic category, yeah. I mean, I, I think we all knew there was no way anybody was cracking the top six absent you know, the move of a potential all-star to get into that group. I mean, that was back, I mean, from March, everybody knew who the top six in this draft was going to be. I think we all knew the draft started at seven. So we had him, we, he, was the, he was the guy we were going after that we could reasonably have an expectation with our assets to go get. How would you rate the way you guys handled the draft tonight? I, I, don't, I don't rate it. I mean, you know, I think Ben Falk, who used to work for us, who's probably smarter than all of us, you know, talks about it's a fool's errand to rate the draft, and tomorrow there'll be draft grades, and, and they're fun, and it's entertainment value. But, you know, I get upset when, not, not myself, but, you know, when a team gets picked on for what they're doing in the draft, because nobody ever knows. Um, you just don't know who ends up panning out and who doesn't, and decisions that are questioned today based on projection isn't necessarily what happens two, three years down the road on production. I mean, I mean I've been through drafts where, you know, we took guys up in the upper part of the lottery and got A's for those guys, and guys we took in the second round ended up being better players. So, you know, I think if you really want to do this, you have to send the grades out at the end of their rookie-scale contracts and give them, give them time. I mean, we have some guys that got drafted tonight that are going to take some time to develop, but that's, that's the job. You know, you take the guys with the upside, you develop them, you maximize their potential, and that's when you have to look at the draft. I mean, I think the only thing that's really fair is if you'd graded trades for existing players because now you've got a, a fair sample size. Neil, what was your approach with guys who were in this draft who had kind of an injury history? A lot of due diligence. Um, you know, we've been very lucky um, the last four years, Jason, to have Chris Stackpole working with us. Um, his diagnostic skills have been incredible. Um, he's very aggressive. He's probably more bullish on the effects of PT over surgery and isn't as scared away by injury histories as someone would be just basically basing it on an MRI or an image. Um, but you know, this was an interesting group. I think this group on, a, on the whole, probably across the board, was the highest character group. Like there were far less questions as a group on issues of character and off-court behavior, but probably more questions about high impact guys and previous injury conditions. So it's something we did our due diligence on. I can tell you we didn't, we didn't leave anybody on the board because of injuries tonight. Uh, we took the two best players we could get, and that was absent any injury concerns for other players. That didn't, that didn't affect us. It, did, it didn't get to that point for us, I guess, is the best way to say it. And obviously, depending on what you do with Tim and Pat, I mean, you're one over on the roster. No, we're even now. Oh, you're even. 15? Yeah. yeah. So we came into the night with 13 guaranteed contracts. Um, or sorry, 12 guaranteed contracts, Pat on a non-guaranteed till the end of July, and then two, and then three, yeah, we, yeah, we, exactly. Um, and then we had the three picks turned into two. So as of right now, um, we've got 15 with Pat, we've got 16 with Tim. The 17-man deal, is that going to go through, or is that been? Well, no, it's a two-way contract. It is a little bit different. Um, I could have the cap guy, you know, talk to you guys about it, you know, on Monday. But um, basically, it's still a 15-man roster, it's just you can have two players on two-way contracts, a little bit like hockey. Yeah. And then they get paid on a prorated basis up to a certain maximum number of games, Dwight, when they're with the big club. So it's a little bit of the hockey model. When we talked to Zach, he said he hadn't got a chance to speak with you. Have you talked to him? No, he talks to you guys first. Um, I did speak to him. Uh, so he was excited. I mean, he was clearly had a lot of media obligations, you know, back in New York and uh, got a chance to speak with you guys. And um, Terry and I got a chance to talk to him. Welcome to the team. Obviously, you guys will get to meet him on Monday. Um, Caleb's voicemail was full. 
Um, the problem is they look at my number, it looks like it's another reporter calling them from 503. So um, I'll, have to, I'll have to get a hold of Rosie and Rosie Barnes and just make sure we get on the phone uh, whenever I get out of here. You mentioned that, um, that you know, Caleb and Zach bring toughness. Do you think that was something that was missing from the team or it's needed? I, I don't know that it was missing. I just know that it's a great value add. Um, you know, just getting guys that, you know, I, I think sometimes you get caught up in something specific. Well, we need a defender, so we just get a defender and we overlook other things, or we need to get tougher, or we need to get more athletic. And so in this case, you know, I, I think the toughness is just more from a mindset. You know, I'm not talking about, you know, hockey thugs. I'm talking about guys that are mentally tough. When you look at a guy like, um, you know, you look at a guy like Caleb, what he's been through, how he's transformed himself physically, mentally, what he's done with his game, what he's been through as a person, that kind of toughness. A guy like Zach Collins, who we know is a chippy player, doesn't back down. You guys that cover the WCC because a UOP saw that. Um, the fact that he had to come off the bench. I mean, it shows a lot about the kid that this is a guy that for the first half of the season was basically playing backup, limited minutes, right? And then when, when push came to shove and it was time you know, to play with the big boys in the NCAA tournament, you look at his minutes increasing and his impact on the floor increasing tells me a lot about that kind of kid and that kind of player that he stayed ready accepted his role, but was ready to step into a larger role on the biggest stage. Did that make you at all uncomfortable knowing that, I mean, he's a six man, he's a, a bench guy coming off the bench, or when you saw him play, that was enough for you? That was, that was enough. That was, that was more than enough. It seems like he's a pretty confident kid, too, just in talking to him. He is. Ready. You know, I, I think, too, Jay, you know, I think um, a kid that, you know, played at Bishop Gorman in Vegas, you know, he's not a kid that was at a small school you know, that was the man and then went to Gonzaga. And this is a guy that was a big time high school player, right? Played on one of the best high school teams in the country with other NBA players and prospects that have a pipeline of players going to the NBA that had to compete for everything he got. So, um, so I, I, I valued that. Any more questions for Neil? Anything else? So hopefully we'll see you guys on, uh, on Monday. Thanks for hanging around. And, um, and by the way, I do, I know I don't take care of you guys all the time, but I didn't. Colin wanted to make you wait till the 65th, 60th pick was done. And I said, no, I'm going in there. They all need to go home. They don't need to hang here any longer. We're good. So, so way, yes. So you didn't buy a second round pick? Did we did not. Okay. We don't have any money left. That went, actually, the money went in the, uh, the Nurkic trade to Denver, if you guys remember. So um, it's, believe me, it's the only reason Paul's on an airplane right now, because if we had money to spend, it would be burning a hole in his pocket. So. We, we played a little defense back in February to make sure we only took two guys. So, all right. Monday you're bringing Zach and Caleb in? Yeah, I'm sure Colin will announce it, but the goal is to have a press conference on, uh, on Monday, introduce them to you guys, and, uh, and then that way we have a gap to get them home a little bit before coming back for summer league practice. All right? Thank you. Thanks, guys.